Welcome back to the Washington Huddle. Time to go inside the huddle. I'm Brian Parsons. I'm Nathan Epstein, and let's go inside the NFC East. Maybe going back to the days of the NFC Beast, because pretty much all four of these teams are going to be division contenders. All right, let's go ahead and pull up the final regular season standings from last year. The Cowboys ran away with the division, 13 and three record, seven and one at home, all with a rookie quarterback and a rookie running back, and of course that dominant offensive line. And then you have the Giants. They were 11 and 5. They made the playoffs for the first time in four seasons, and Eli Manning has some new weapons this year. Well, the Redskins, of course, 8, 7 and 1. That tie against the Bengals really hurt them and so did home losses to Carolina and the Giants. The Skins 4 and 4 at FedEx Field. And the Eagles who will open up with the Redskins under head coach Doug Peterson and rookie quarterback Carson Wentz, a respectable 7 and 9 for a team that was clearly in rebuild mode. Philly ended the season on a two-game winning streak. Now, as is normally the case, a lot of eyes will be on the Cowboys. Nathan's going to break down Dallas. How does it look in 2017? Well, they're clearly the division champions until someone proves otherwise. But here are the biggest takeaways right off the bat. First, the suspensions. Three defensive linemen are suspended. One of them, David Irving, has to sit out four games. He had four sacks last season, one of the tops on the team. Since 2014, 12 Cowboys players have been suspended, totaling 108 games. Finally, the Cowboys have maybe the toughest schedule in the league. Get this, Brian. They could be 0-3 when all is said and done, considering they open up with the Giants. Then they have to go to Denver, one of the top defenses in the league, and to Arizona, two of the top teams in their respective conference. Yeah, that's a tough stretch for the Cowboys to but, open with. But if there is something to love about the Cowboys, as you mentioned, it is that offensive line. Big. Best in the league the last two years. Two different running backs, DeMarco Murray and Ezekiel Elliott, led the league in rushing. And as for the quarterback, I love Dak Prescott. I don't think last year was a fluke at all. 3,600 yards passing, 67% completion, 23 touchdowns, only four interceptions as a rookie. Third highest passer rating through the preseason, though. It is the preseason, and he's got weapons in tight end Jason Witten, receivers Cole Beasley, and the X Factor, Des Bryant. A playoff team from a year ago. Brian, do you think they have a shot? at the postseason appearances talking about the next team in the NFC East. We're talking about the New York Giants, and this is an interesting team, and it looks like they are all in for making another run. Coach Ben McAdoo back for his second season. The Giants, the only team to sweep the Cowboys last season. Eli Manning, get this, 36 years old. He started every game for the last 12 seasons. He's an Iron Man now in football. Part of that, he's got a solid offensive line as well, and he has Odell Beckham and Sterling Shepard at receiver, but he also has a new target. Veteran wideout Brandon Marshall is now a giant. He comes over from the Jets. 82 career touchdowns. A welcome addition for Eli. Eight seasons, he's had at least 1,000 yards receiving. Four different seasons, he's had double digits and touchdowns. Marshall is a durable receiver. He doesn't miss many games. Last season was a bit of a down year for Marshall, but again, he was playing for the New York Jets. <laughs> so also keep an eye on rookie tight end Evan Ingram. He could be an impact player for Eli. The Giants are good on defense too. Stack the defensive end, and they're hard to throw against with all pro safety Landon Collins. And you have the corners, Janoris Jenkins and Dominique Rogers Cromarty. They're as good as it gets in the mm -hmm. NFC East. The Giants should be good. They're a contender for a division title for sure. So Nathan. How about the Eagles? All right, so as it seems with every team in the division, they are going to be contenders for the NFC East title. Seven and nine a year ago, they missed out on the playoffs. Can their defense step up? Respectable last year under first year defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz, you may remember, remember that name, former head coach of the Lions. That's right. That's right. And they added some defensive talent with defensive end Derek Barnett, who they drafted with the 14th overall pick. But we know what the Eagles are going to win with. That is their offense first. They have a new addition to their receiving core. Alshon Jeffries, the new man in Philly. He joins Torrey Smith and Nelson Aguilar. Only five receiving touchdowns in Chicago last year, but he was playing with three starting quarterbacks. And then, speaking of the quarterback, there is Carson Wentz, the rookie quarterback last year. 3,700 yards passing, 16 touchdowns. Only 14 interceptions, I say only. Reports out of Philly have been that he has shown considerable improvement in training camp, and that has shown in the preseason games. Attempted among the fewest passes per game this preseason, still rated a top 10 passer rating of 125. Really showed a lot of upside last year and is expected to be much improved this year. Well, the Redskins swept the Eagles last season, a 27-20 win at FedEx Field, a 27-22 win at Lincoln Financial Field. The Redskins actually a one-point home underdog against the Eagles in week one. Here's my prediction. I say the Redskins finally sort out their offense after that dismal preseason. Kirk Cousins, 
maybe throws a couple of touchdown passes and let's say the Redskins get the 24 to 21 win at home. That's what I say. Let's say. In the first win last year, three Redskins running back rushed for a combined 230 yards. And in both games combined, the defense, the defense sacked Wentz nine times running and defense. I say first game, defense is hyped up. They keep Wentz under control. Kirk Cousins does just enough. I say 23-17, Redskins get the win. Nathan's got a six-point win. I've got a three-point win. We're actually going to be keeping tabs, a running tab of each week's predictions, and we'll tally them up at the end of the season for bragging rights. All right, Bruce, ball's in your court. Back to you. Brian and Nathan, thanks. You know, nearly 75 million people will be playing fantasy football this year, and I know many of you are among them, so we are thrilled to have Jake Seeley, the senior writer of Roto Experts. He joins us here on the Washington Huddle for Jake's Fantasy Takes. Roto Experts is the top fantasy sports webpage in the country. Jake, I like having players from my favorite team on my fantasy squad. So, if you had to pick a couple of Redskins, who would you go with? It's the big ones from last year. Kirk Cousins was a top 10 quarterback. He will be again this year. That, that offense hasn't changed at all. He's going to keep passing the ball. And if you look at it, Jamison Crowder last year, great connection with him. There's been reports at the camp that even with the addition of Terrell Pryor, who should be on your fantasy roster and starting as well, that his eyes are going to Jamison Crowder first still after the connection they had last year. Jordan Reed, when he's healthy, needs to be on your team every single week. And in the backfield, as of right now, it's still Rob Kelly from last year. It was a serviceable running back. He's the starter as of now. Samaje P. Ryan is the rookie they drafted, but he's probably not going to be in the mix for a couple weeks. So it's the big guys. It's everybody you knew from last year with the additions of Terrell Pryor, and you're going to love it this year. So what about the Eagles? Who would we go with if we were Eagles fans? Alshon Jeffrey is the big name at wide receiver. Outside of that, there's not a whole lot. Zach Ertz at tight end should be good, especially now that they made the trade and got rid of Jordan Matthews. But at the running back situation, LeGarrette Blunt hasn't looked that good so far. You got questions of Wendell Smallwood getting mixed in. So Darren Sproles in a PPR, if you want a running back out of that team. But really, it's Alshon Jeffrey, Zach Ertz, and that's really about it, which is good for Redskins fans. You don't have to worry about too much. If you haven't made your picks and Kirk Cousins is available, do you take him with your first quarterback pick? No, no, Kirk Cousins, is not, he's not Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Drew Brees yet, but he's on that next tier. That's the same tier of guys, basically four to ten. He's, he's in that next tier. I'd probably get ten. All right, how long do you wait on injured players, uh, players who might have had slow preseasons, guys like that? Well, the big one, for example, is like Andrew Luck. He's not playing for week one, and that's going to affect everybody else on that team. T.Y. Hilton was a big person you drafted in the first five rounds. You still throw him out there. But other injured players like Odell Beckham, because he doesn't play until Sunday night, there's a big question with him. If you have a situation like that, whether it's week one, whether it's later in the season where it's Sunday night, Monday night football, and you're not going to know till game time, you've got to put those guys either one in your flex or have a backup plan that's in that game or that plays in the next night if it's Sunday night football like we have this week. So you, always, you can't put yourself in a position where you're either left with him and nothing else, and then you get a zero because he's not ready to play. That's the biggest mistake most people make. You know what, folks? You can't pay for this. Jake, we could spend hours on this. Now, how do we get more fantasy football news from you between now and kickoff? RotoExperts.com, as you mentioned. You can follow me at AllInKid. It's a poker little thing that goes from back in the day. But both of those things, I try to answer everybody. If I don't get to you, I also put my rankings out on Twitter. So you, you'll get your answers. All right. Thank you very much, Jake.